I'm not going to put stuff back. Uh, uh, that big empty void is our signature look. Okay? And deal with it. You didn't make any sounds, right? Yes, I did. Oh, I didn't hear I it. said hum. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. And I'm Steve, and this is 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, uh, playing podcast. I wish I had the core strength to sit this high all of the time. It'd be a lot better for my back. The chairs do go up. No, it's not about the chair height. It's about a it's, it's about, about your, keeping my shoulders. Your back. physical strength, your yeah. physical ability to hold yourself up through I your just life. I want to be like this. I know. Well, I know hey how it is. Yeah. All right, this first ad was sent by Dave life. Santander. It's called Axe Guitar, 1971 and 1973. It's not. Uh, okay, if that's what the ad, okay, that's what the listing is called. Yeah. I came up with my own name for this. Yes. It's the Chet it Axkins. Very unique Axe Guitar built in early 1970s by local luthier slash repairman Maury Jones in Des Moines, Iowa. I understand that he built two or three of these guitars for the purpose of giving one of them to guitarist Chet Atkins in Nashville. He did present one to Chet in Nashville in 1973. Chet had a song called Yakety Axe. The neck is built from a real axe handle and the body is hard maple. It does play, could use a better setup, it includes nice hard case, custom built for this guitar. That is a very large hard case. I want to say right at the beginning here, Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of axe guitars over the years. Oh, we that don't, is an axe handle. We don't usually cover them on the show because, oh, ha, 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 ha axe guitar. Ha, yeah. ha, ha, Gene yeah. Simmons. Ha, 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 kiss, blah, blah, blah. Heavy metal axe. This is the best looking axe guitar I have ever seen. It is a, it's, it's beautifully designed. Like, I maybe have one or two notes on it, but this is like, a mid-century marvel. It's clean. It's beautiful. It's slick. Like when I first saw it, it was like, oh my gosh, is that made actual out of actual metal? Like I didn't think it was like a steel axe, but I mm -hmm. thought maybe it was like aircraft aluminum or something like that. It's just wood, right? It's painted wood. The clear pit guard on it is beautiful in a modern way. Oh yeah. yeah. That 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 punched out uh uh chromed control thing. Mm -hmm. With the clear knobs, it's all beautiful. That the 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 pickup on there, that Tysco style pickup. Even like, I th I feel like the headstock could be slightly have more character to it. Like it could have a little knob on it to look like an axe handle. Mm -hmm. But I see what they were going for there, and I see that they were you know working with the material that they had. Right. It's Here. just a an amazing looking axe guitar. They did it. The guy that built this did it. I love it. It's beautiful. What do you think, Steve? Here's a question I have. I know you're a, you are a uh, a legal expert. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, you have multiple JDs, right? <laughs> Well, Did you get more than one JD? I don't Probably know. What, not. I don't know what a JD is. No, it's a it's a juris doctorate. It's like what a lawyer gets. Oh, the degree have, a lawyer I've, gets. Yeah, clearly so, I'm not the legal yeah, expert here because uh, I have no idea what that is. So the question I have for you is: Do you think an axe guitar is like an obvious thing to make? Like I know they call like, oh, this is my this is my axe. I it, take it. I take it to me for the battle of rock. It's not, it's, it's, it's obvious to guitarists because we call them axes sometimes, which right. is a silly, dumb thing to do. And, you know, we have, you know, wood shedding and stuff like that. And, you know, like it to guitarists, we, we understand the reference. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We understand the humor behind that, the, uh, the symbolism behind it. I think most people would much easily much more easily understand like a tennis racket guitar right we covered one of those sure, a, ago. Sure. a broom guitar mm -hmm. things like that where this isn't as apparent to the average everyday uh viewer that's not a guitarist not viewer of this channel but someone who might lay eyes on this so where i'm going with this is this question then mm -hmm. do you think this is um unique enough that 
the Maury Jones estate should be collecting revenue from Gene Simmons. Like, no. should, should they be suing the shit out of Gene Simmons? No. Because he s- clearly stole his axe base from this guitar. I bet there's, I bet this isn't even the first axe guitar. Right. Well, it's you know, the first one I've, it's the oldest one I've seen. Yeah, sure. No, I don't, I don't think there's any case there. And when you know that Gene Simmons is a huge Chet Atkins fan. Yeah, yeah, totally. So he's done. I just want to say, like, this thing looks amazing, and it was on reverb for $4.95, 125 Oh, I know. That's nuts. That's nuts. It looks super clean. It looks super well-designed. Like, who knows how it plays? Maybe it's awful. Maybe it just plays like ass. But it looks like axe. <laughs> it's got a body like a battle axe over here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> It doesn't have it has a body like a tree filling axe. I don't yeah. even no. I don't know what that type of axe is officially called, but it, it's so classy looking. It reminds. Did were you like privy to that trend that happened years and years ago, where like well to do people, like well off people, were buying like boutique fashion axes and like decorating their you know their Manhattan lofts with them. No, there was like this whole trend. Like, I think it was like a thing that kept reading articles about on boing boing or whatever, where like there was this one ax maker who was making these very specific, like very high end axes and all these rich people were buying them to like feel connected to the land or whatever like that. It it has that vibe of like this upscale decorative ax. That sounds so stupid. Well, most things are stupid, (laughs) Steve. We're, we've been doing, a guitar podcast for a decade. Don't lecture me on what things sound stupid. <laughs> We've been doing the same thing every week. That's true. That's this true. Is, this is a dumb thing we do, but it's fun. I don't have a and lot. To, like, I don't I'm, have a lot to say about this. I'm all for rich people being separated from their money, doing dumb things. <laughs> is there anything better in this world than separating a rich person from their money? So like, I, I watch, especially uh, when axes are involved. I watch a, a show on YouTube that's mm-hmm. like a. It's like a pseudo financial show. Okay. It's it's like kind of like giving basic financial advice to dummies kind of a thing. You're not going to pitch Dave Ramsey to no. me, are you? No, but it's kind of it's like a it's like a millennial it's a millennial <laughs> version. It's like millennial a millennial Dave Ramsey. It's like millennial Dave Ramsey. Listen, you got to stop financing your avocado toast. Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, so, so basically you're never going to be able to afford a house. So get that dream out of your head. It's all about managing renting for the rest of your life. So the, so they had this guest today who is like a, a fairly famous comedian, I guess he says he made like $300,000 last year, Okay, which is like 10 times more than what the average guest on that show makes. The dude's spending habits were just as bad. As like, I thought about this because you're like, oh, rich people spending money. The dude's spending habits were just as bad as all of the poor people. It's like DoorDash four times a week. Right. But, but he the has difference the money is for like it. he has the money for it. Yeah. So the host basically did not give him any crap about it because he's like, well, you can afford I mean, it. You can afford it. So I'm, I can't yeah. like knock you for being dumb with your money. You got money left over. Yeah. Like if you don't want to spend the time to cook, you can afford to do DoorDash. Basically, we need to come up with a good, like dumb idea, like, luxury rich people luxury should, hatchets r- rich people should be subsidizing doordash for everyone else like <laughs> rich people should there should be different price structures like you know we, you've talked about this is totally off topic but who cares who cares right you guys just is this like when are you, you about guys to, just watch to because you like us having you, a personality are you about to get into wendy's surge pricing no i'm gonna say how how like we've talked before like traffic tickets should be adjusted based on your like annual income. So if you're, if you're like a, you got a, like a billion dollars in the bank, right. a traffic ticket shouldn't be $500. Right. It should be $50,000. Oh, because, because the penalty should, should actually be a penalty. Yeah. It should, you right. should have to feel it. Right. Should, it should be the same thing for all sorts of stuff, products. <laughs> like, it's like if you're, if you're loaded and you're ordering DoorDash, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like takeout should cost you like five grand or something like that. And then it should, and then if you're poor, it should be free basically. Like rich people should be subsidizing I, DoorDash I, and grocery shopping and everything else. Like it should all, it should all just, you know, come out in the wash. We have a lot of conversations like this often. And I know there's rich people in the uh, audience and we love you. Thank you for supporting us at an appropriate level. On Patreon. We have a, we have a lot of conversations like this. You and I often after 10 30 at night, 
I do. Right. I do frequently wonder if this is after your sleep meds have kicked in. Uh, <laughs> it how, probably how often is. It is. I mean, because, is it is it after nine o'clock? Yes. Then, then there's your answer. Because many of the times that you throw these ideas out, I'm like, this is about forty seven percent of a good idea. <laughs> And then the rest of it is like a logistical nightmare. Well, that's how much my filters turned down at that because, time of night. Because, for example, the thing that you just pitched, how does DoorDash know how rich you are? Well, we have to have this whole national system where, uh, like, finally we get we get the IRS tied in with commerce. DoorDash brought to you by IRS. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right, Ryan, <laughs> guess what? I hate it. But you know who I love? I love these folks who wait, wait, support. Wait, wait, wait. We should finish this ad. No, I don't have anything else to say what about it. What do you think it. about the price? Four ninety five is great. I know. Even it's such with, a novelty. Even but. with one twenty five shipping, so six twenty five, six twenty. Mm-hmm. Someone out there obviously it's sold already. This listing didn't end, it was sold. Someone saw this and said, Hell yeah. I need this. I've got a whole log cabin aesthetic. I'm one of those rich people that bought one, bought the axe. <laughs> now I need to have the axe guitar. I don't know why they sold it for so cheap. I don't, I don't like, we see so many things listed on the show that are, we, we have to try to understand why it's listed for so much, but why was this listed okay. for so cheap? So here's the thing with this at $495 because of the, parentage of this guitar the provenance provided that's a 200 dollar guitar pickup yeah that guitar pickup's worth almost like more than any and that's probably like you know it's a period correct was it harmonica and the, bridge this they would isn't call it? this isn't the one that was given to chet atkins but it like chet atkins was given one of yes yeah. so this is uh so that's one of the things too that i'm looking at is like that is it's got a, a vintage d armin and it's clean toaster and it's, it's very clean. The, every part of this is very clean for its age. It looks well put together. It's it nails the look. It's using real axe handle materials. Mm-hmm. It's got a stamp on there. The stamp for the price for the axe handle was a buck ninety seven yeah. when this was built. And it's got a sticker on there saying who it was made by and stuff like that. Like it's six twenty out the door. It's so, pretty so, good. Someone it's, got a cool thing. It's an absolute novelty, like, but it's it, pretty good. You're just it's outside, very clean. You're just outside the window for like a nice squire. Yeah. And it's this probably isn't going to play like a like a classic vibe or no, whatever. No. But I mean, it's a it's a collector's piece. Not you're, not because of its provenance, just because it's so cool looking. You're in a you're in a old school country western band. Yes. You write a song about Paul Bunyan. You play it on this guitar. Yes. You're a hit maker, my friend. You are right. you are going platinum you, with that baby. If you've been wanting that Gene Simmons back, that Gene Simmons axe vibe, but you're in a country band, you're in an Americana band. Yeah, you, you're you're a chicken picker or something like that. This is it. You got it. Slide. You're a slide player. Oh man! Finally, an axe guitar for the country Americana hipster players. You know. Mm. Mm-hmm. hipsters mm-hmm. out there this is your clean axe it's not got blood on the edge it's not all like dinged up to look like it was used in a battle with skeleton warriors or something like that it's beautiful we, i can't tell you to go buy it because someone already did yeah and it was sold all right tell us about the sponsor steve or the patreon uh, or whatever i had a really good transition to patreon I'm sorry we had to finish the ad i guess i wrecked your transition um but Patreon, our Patreon over at 60 Cycle, the patreon.com slash 60 Cycle Humcast um, is where we uh, get support from you, the viewer. Uh, and and I'm really, I'm, I'm like, my brain is broken today. I know. The Daylight Savings Time um, has wrecked both of us. I, I know you're watching this a full week after Daylight Savings Time, but we recorded this last week when I'm, we're still just like trashed. I'm just really like fidgety right now. Yeah. I got all kinds of I'm problems. I'm always fidgety. I'm just uh, like ruined. But one of the problems I don't have is with all of these people who support us uh, at the $1 level, Jer- Jared Mione, or maybe it's Gerard Mione. I don't mm. know. Jason Viator and Sardines Are Us. <laughs> uh, at the $5 level, Amanda Mar- Marinovich. I like the people who do novelty names, like joke names, because it's like, they're like, I just want to support, and I also want to be funny. 
but I don't need recognition yeah. for it. Like there's something so pure about that. Like everyone else, you're fine, but I do especially appreciate the novelty name gang. Uh, at the five dollar level, Amanda Marinovich, Matthew Gill, Patrick Zeller. And at the ten dollar level, Darren Cobia, Montgomery Weird, Lee Buck, Montgomery Weird, Montgomery Weird. <laughs> Go. I'm not. I'm not going to break down what what the different things are at different tiers. What I am going to say is uh, last week, and I only I uploaded back to episode 517. But last week I started uploading the podcast audio to uh, to Patreon. So if you support us at any dollar amount on Patreon, uh, you'll be given a private RSSS feed through Patreon and you can listen to the audio, which is exactly the same audio that's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same audio from us. That's on Spotify, but I know Spotify puts in like anywhere from one or two or six ads into it. Uh, and maybe those, those drive you crazy. So if you don't want to hear them, you can pay a buck on patreon and get those go. episodes so you'll patreon. still get you'll still get the app uh, the ads that we read but you, you know, won't get the spotify ads you'll get the sponsorships which you like yeah. anyway string joy Chase you won't Quiz, get uh, you won't get commercials for that band that peaked 40 years ago that's playing at your local casino is that a commercial that's been yeah playing? i get because they're localized i get commercials for yamva casino like oh okay come gotcha. see yeah. come see sticks at pachanga kind of well, stuff that's nice the, the patreons get Less advertisements on their audio feed. Yeah. That's nice. Uh, this episode's also brought to you by True Fire. I downloaded the True Fire app. Have you tried it on the app yet? I haven't yet. I've been doing it on my desktop. Yeah, I've been doing it on the app. It's it's pretty cool. So it's it's uh, it probably doesn't load as fast as it does on the desktop, but it's really convenient because now I can practice anywhere I want. Yeah. I mean, I've been messing around with like all sorts of headphone rig things for years, and I got that new Boss Katana Go. Uh, so... I really should get on the app. Mm, mm. I bet I've had a busy week, so I haven't been sitting on the couch late at night. Gotcha. Watching Star Trek with the captions on while I jam along to new wave songs. So I, I've been, I've, been uh, I haven't had a chance to do that recently. I've last night I started watching, uh, the Tim Pierce, uh, how to play like Jimi Hendrix. Like it's not how to play Jimi Hendrix songs. It's how to like get the vibe, mm. which is really interesting. Nice. I, and, and uh, I, it might be a little advanced for my playing ability, but I, I'm going to like actually try to push through some of that. Try to, cause it's like fun. It's like not teaching, like here's some scales and whatever, which I still need to like work on that stuff. Cause it's fundamental, but it's fun to also just do something that's like, here's a style. And also to kind of hear Tim Pierce talk about like the, his, sto the stories of how, you know, he, broke into like he got into guitar because of Jimi hendrix it's just, uh, there's so many people sure say that sure. but know, it's like, tim pierce yeah it's tim, tim pierce. freaking yeah. pierce tim freaking pierce go over check here. it out uh true fire we got a code down below do you know what the code is i can never remember uh 60 cycle 30 or 60 something cycle like that 30 yeah, yeah. there's an well, affiliate I'll put it link. on the screen it's right here. yeah it's, it's right down here yeah. <laughs> producer <laughs> brian put it on the screen for us Th uh, thank you producer go check brian. it out this next ad Sent by Matt Carnavali. It's called Junkyard Telecaster. This is an EVH Wolfgang Cabernita Telecaster. Junkyard, quote, EVH Wolfgang Fender Cabernita Telecaster. USA Parts Caster. What is it? It's so many things. I know. It's a 2016 Telecaster American Special Maple Neck with Jumbo Frets. It's a 2013 Fender USA Cabernita Alder Body Professionally Refinished in Ivory Over Black Nitro by our master luthier, Johan P. Smith. Tone control added for more tele layout. CTS pots and switchcraft switch. Fender machine heads, non fender, but good quality bridge. Hand wound TV Jones pickup set by Graham Hayward. That sound fantastic. Find a video of the guitar playing on our Facebook page, The Vintage Guitar Guy. And now it, I'm looking at this for the first time. It's a lot of parts. This is a parts build. Yeah. And I like it. Like this, this is an episode where we're looking at, at guitars that I like, apparently like I've, I don't know what's been going on with me lately, but when I've been seeing relics the past couple of months, mm -hmm. there, there's something in me that goes like, Ooh, Ooh. Oh, I like, I like that. Maybe because I don't have anything currently that's like actually relict. Maybe I need something like that in my life, but I, I like, I like the whole vibe here. 
Like it's it's a lot of a lot of a little things, you know. It's a Telecaster. All right, we got some Tele vibes. It's aged really nicely, so you get some like vintage feel, vintage vibes going on. But then it has this Van Halen theme for some reason. There's no other connection on here to Van Halen at all. Like the pickups, not Van Halen. The finish, not Van Halen. None of the controls, Van Halen. Nothing else Van Halen, just the pick guard for some reason. And there's like a little bit of Van Halen striping on the neck pickup for some reason. <laughs> like, But I think it's kind of like, it's kind of cute. It's kind of funny in a way. And like, I actually kind of like the Van Halen stripes as a visual look. I think it works on here without it making sense as a Van Halen guitar. Right. And then you've got the Cabernita pickups. You've got like some Soldier Trons on here. You've got a nice clean hardtail, like six saddle bridge on here. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it's attractive. This guitar has a really interesting uh, journey. If you were to buy this in the United States, it'd be a really, this guitar yeah. literally you could say has been around the world. It's for sale. The vintage guitar guy is a reverb shop in uh, South Africa, right? No, in Civ Civitanova Market, Italy. So that's where the oh, shop is located. But it was made in South Africa. But it was made in South Africa. Made, made it was it was assembled right. and it modified, was relic or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. So that's really this thing uh, has really been around the world, around the world, around the. You could play that song on this guitar. What do you think, Steve? I I think it's attractive. I want to know what you think. I don't know if it's nineteen hundred dollars attractive. Well, yeah, I'm never gonna buy anything that much. Um, you know? I'm not gonna. But, I'm not, if I was gonna throw nineteen hundred dollars at something, it would not be this. But I do like looking at it. Yeah, but it is really cool looking, and I like the idea of taking a vintage white uh, Telecaster like this and kind of slapping this weird little splash of Eddie Van Halen on right, it. Right, right. So goofy. Like what's. Like, what if you took, like, a like a Gretsch country gentleman and gave it, like, the dime bag purple lightning finish? <laughs> you know? Well, like, mixing mixing and matching yeah. weird signature looks with guitars that it doesn't really belong on. Like, I, I think that's fun, and it's silly. I mean, that's almost, and I know it would, I, I understood the vibe that it was going for, but uh, Emily over at Get Offset, her bender. That was the the cloud boob. Yeah, yeah. The bender, but it's like it's got lightning bolts on it, and you're, you're just kind of like, who is this for? Right, right. It's like such a, it felt like it should be like a cringe kind of, I don't know, whatever, sure. hard rock trope, but it's on a, a B bender tele, uh, GNL. <laughs> I like it. It's, it's like an alternate reality. Yeah. Like if if Van Halen had gotten into like some sort of chicken picking, uh, kind of like bluegrassy stuff, like this would have been the guitar that you, you put together. You bring that up, and that I mean, Fender's done these like paranormal and whatever alternate reality mm -hmm. versions, and that's the thing they should do is they should work with like paranormal alternate reality signatures. Right. So you have something like this would be like an EVH. You have to partner with the EVH. Yeah, estate. yeah. Have a like a they. I guess they've done the Jim Root Telecaster and the Jim Root. I think jazz master or uh -huh. Jaguar. I forget which one. How about a, how about like a, a, you know, alternate reality, Jim root Stratocaster and force him to not have a hard tail. Right. <laughs> like you can't have a hard tail on this gym. It's alternate reality. I'm trying to think of some other examples that would It'd work. have to be artists in their stable. Um, like a Dick Dale Ibanez. Well, no, it's, it's, well, it would be, it'd have to be Fender stuff because I'm, it doesn't have to well, be. Well, I'm just thinking of these all as a line of Fender because they've done paranormal okay, okay, and okay. alternate reality. Well, I'm thinking outside of Fender. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Dick Dale, Les Paul. <laughs> like a Les Paul Telecaster. <laughs> like if, uh, if Les Paul had wanted a Telecaster instead of making his own guitar design. <laughs> If Les Paul had invented the Telecaster, and I'm not, I'm not talking about a Telecaster that is Les Paul themed, like a carved top and two humbuckers right, right. and four knobs and and a, a floating uh, pit guard. Like there's like some other angle to it, mm -hmm. like the weird pickups that he liked and the weird controls that he liked and stuff like that, or Ju maybe like the weird like wings on the side of right, the log. Right. You know, like throwback to, to that sort of stuff. A Joe Satriani uh, Univox High Flyer. <laughs> The great thing about this idea is you can just say words. Yeah, you can just works. say stuff. The more ridiculous the idea is, the better 
it, yeah. it, it goes. Like a, you know, like a Steve Vai, uh, Dan Electro with a yeah. monkey grip. Tim, Tim Henson, Gretsch baritone. Sure. The, yeah. the guitar is bigger than he is. <laughs> You're talking about like a, is he like a jazz box? I, in my head, he always looks small in pictures, well, but Steve, I've never actually you met and him, I are, so I don't know. You, I have met him. Uh, you have met him. I've hung, right. out, I've hung out in the same physical space. I breathed the same era yeah. as him because he was at one of the Toman events. Right, right. Um, uh, we're big guys. That's true. So it's hard for me to judge if he's big or little. Like I remember him being normal size, but I think of everyone who's shorter than me as being normal size. Yeah. So unless you're four foot, nothing like I don't go like, Oh, you're short. Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. everyone in between like four, two and four, you know, two, six, it's like one, a child. six, one. I'm like, Oh, you're just a regular size person to me. Four, four, two. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if someone was four, two, I'd be like, Oh, you're, you're, you're little. You're, you're a little person here. I get it. You're small. But, it, you know, I don't think, I don't really think of people's sizes, you know, think. unless they're bigger than me. The moment someone is an inch bigger it's than terrifying. me, then I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Uppies. Oh. <laughs> what? Pick me up. Pick yeah, me up. I know what it means. I'm just picturing you doing that to Josh Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've got one more in me, one more like signature sort of thing. Yeah. Like a, like a, like a, like a, like a Johnny Marr firebird. Oh, I was thinking you go in opposite directions. Is, is it the harmony Juno? That's the tiny one. Mm, mm-hmm. Uh, the Greg Koch harmony Juno. <laughs> yeah. Just a little guitar on a Espe- big guy. Yeah. Especially, you know, knowing that he has the, the Reverend gristle master. Yeah. Yeah. That's ex- like the extra big telly. It's like a half an inch bigger in every direction. It's extra big. I wouldn't mind having one of those. Jumbo. Those are good guitars. You should get one. I probably should get one of those someday. Yeah. I need to make room in my quiver. I, I I'm full up I, instead of, I've uh, got guitars like leaning up against tables and stuff upstairs now. Cause I've, I've run out of wall hangers, which is my rule. Like when I run out of wall hangers, I have to sell stuff and I've got stuff listed for sale right now and it's not moving. Mm. I need to get serious about Uh-oh. moving, moving some other stuff too. So Uh-oh. yeah, it's getting, and I've got, I've, I've got something on the way in the mail. What? Yeah. I, I'm getting that Epiphone that I've been wanting. Oh yeah. The, uh, the, uh, that uh, orange one. Well, Ryan, do you want to tell us more about it since it's time for what's new? No, I don't want to talk about that for what's new. Okay. What do you want to talk about for I'm what's new? Talk about producer Brian over there. Producer Brian, the very creepy producer Brian. <laughs> he's uh he's our new producer. He sits behind the camera over there and makes sure that the show runs good. I guess. Wait, well, so why am I writing everything down? Uh, he could probably take notes for you. Yeah. Br- Brian, would you like to take notes? Uh, he's not responding. I don't. Th- I don't. Th- he didn't sign up for that. So, anyways, uh, this past weekend, Lauren and I, my wife, my wife and I, uh, we drove Lauren. all the way to Phoenix, Arizona, to buy this mannequin that kind of looks like me, and we had a great time. We had a wonderful adventure. Huge thanks to my sister who watched the kids for two nights. She picked them up from school. She hung out for all of Saturday and all of Sunday with the kids so that Lauren and I could get out of the house. And that, that was really like the biggest thing of it for us. Like we had a blast picking up this mannequin and having a, a good time doing that. But just being able to be out of the house as a couple and do a long road trip together and have quiet so we could hear our thoughts and then break that silence with words that we were speaking to another adult, right? Uh, right. Other, other parents out there, you know what I'm talking about? Like it, it, was a deeply restful adventure for us. So huge thanks to my sister for taking care of that. And huge thanks to everyone else who made the trip possible. We did a GoFundMe where we raised uh, just over 900 bucks last time I checked. Wow. Uh, And then Sweetwater contributed a sponsorship with uh, those lav mics from Sure. And so those things together uh, completely covered the trip and there was no out-of-pocket expense. Uh, which which is fantastic, which is amazing. And, you know, it's, it's going to be an investment to the show because now we have producer Brian over there. Um, I will say, I think he's a good luck charm. Why is that? Well, it just feels like every stranger that encounters him mm-hmm. is immediately on board to just do things for us and be 
kind to us and be helpful. Like, I think I'm going to, I, every like major life purchase okay. or arrangement for the rest of my life, I'm going to bring him along. Are you saying producer Brian is the reason that Bitcoin is up right now? That he's, he's the reason everything is up right now. Mm. Mm-hmm. Everything is going up, 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 up. And it's all because of producer Brian over here. Um, we, we picked him up on our way into town and right. then we went to the hotel after that. And the, the clerk is checking us in and he saw, you know, all my information that we're from San Diego. He's like, Oh, you're in from out of town. Huh? Okay. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yeah, you know, we're, we're here for like a weird reason. And he was like, just tried to play it off. Cause I'm sure people go out there for like swinger events or something like that. <laughs> Who knows? And I was like, no, no, like, let, I'm going to, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a picture. And he's like, Oh, great. Now I'm getting pulled into pictures. I have to look yeah. at pictures of these, this couple's weird thing that they're traveling for. And I'm like, I got tagged in a video and there's this mannequin that looks like me. And we came up here to buy it. And I showed him the picture and he started like busting up laughing, looking at it. And then you're like, ah, I needed this. Thank you. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then because I had booked the cheapest room. Sure. At that resort, like, yeah, they, I, like, like at that hotel resort, whatever, no, whatever it is. Yeah, you're notoriously cheap. I know I'm notorious this. cheap. When I travel, it's like <laughs> all I need is a bed and a door that locks. Like, who cares as long as it looks kind of like yeah. clean, whatever. Uh, so I booked this room. It didn't even have pictures of the room on Travelocity where they had pictures of all the other rooms that were more expensive. What? So I got the cheapest room at this place, and he booked us up to like a top level suite that was like. I bet that that whole suite was like 1,200 square feet. Wow. Like it was huge. It was this huge like apartment hotel. Right. We ended up right. staying there two nights at paying the rate of the cheap room. And, you know, like we, we took the head with us to go have dinner with Phil McKnight and his wife. And uh, when I pulled it, pulled the head out of this box that I had, like everyone in the restaurant stopped and had to come take a look. <laughs> Like, there were these kids that were like having like a prom date or something like that. And they all came over and wanted to take pictures with Are it. you serious? Yeah. No, like it. Am I, so if I go on Instagram and like look for like hashtag maybe. Phoenix high school prom or whatever, I'm going to find pictures of this. Yeah. Uh, it was like, it was like high schoolers who were like, you know, wearing ill fitting, you know, like, like coats and ties yeah, and stuff like yeah. that. So it's like something's going on. They're doing like a group date. It could have been mm-hmm. like, you know, some sort of homeschool event or something. I don't know. Like kids were out having a fancy dinner, but like every time someone encounters it, it's like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. What can we do for you? We yeah, stopped at the yeah. center of the world. Do you know mm-hmm. what that is? Um, I mean, I assume it's the center of the world. It's the center of the world. There's this monument in between uh, Arizona and California well, that doesn't make sense. In between Phoenix <laughs> and San Diego. Right. It's on the California side, but it's out in the desert out there by Glamis, you know? Okay. Um, and it's this, this eccentric mayor built this monument where it's, it's got these, all these granite columns, like these rows of granite that have all of humanity's major ideas and accomplishments etched mm-hmm. into them. The idea being that th- this information will be preserved for thousands of years in the granite. Yeah. And then no, there's Because this- notoriously, the middle of the desert does not have any kinds of like phenomena that cause uh, erosion of any type. Yeah. Like sandstorms and stuff like that. That, was, that doesn't erode <laughs> anything. I don't know. It's been out there forever and it's still, everything looks still pretty clean still. Um, but then they also have this pyramid. Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. go inside the pyramid and they have a seal in the ground and you're supposed to touch the seal and make a wish. And the seal says that it is the center of the world. Right. It's the center of the whole world right there. And they have a gift shop and everything. So anyways, we go in there and uh, the lady's like, okay, well, you got to pay this fee and we're going to, you know, give you the guide and we can give you a tour. Or you can like wander around yourself. And then we're like, okay, we have to tell her because we want to pull out the mannequin and do photo ops around here. And we don't want right. to have it be a weird surprise. So we're like, hey, this is, listen, this is what we're going to do. We just don't want to you know, be disrespectful or cause any problems here. You want to make sure it's cool. Immediately. Because there's also like a spiritual element there. They're, they're, yeah. they're selling crystals yeah. and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, people do yoga out there and stuff like that. I didn't, I didn't want to be disrespectful. I wanted to clear it first. Immediately, everyone on staff was on board. They're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> yes, this is hilarious. This is so entertaining. And I was like, do you happen to have a 
wheelchair and they're like i think we do they oh they got gosh. us a wheelchair so we could scoot <laughs> producer brian around the grounds and do photo ops with them and stuff it's terrible. it was it i'm telling you not a single person it was like hanging out with bubble boy or like Pee Wee Herman or something like that. <laughs> like every single person that we encountered right. who interacted with this thing, it made their day and they made our day better. I think there's magic to them. I, we originally like everyone was like, oh, this thing is going to be cursed. I think, it, I think it's magic. So Ryan, what was your wish at the center of the world? I can't tell you. It won't come true. Rookie move. More wishes. That's the wish. <laughs> Always. Yeah, but then I have to go back to the center of the world to, to redeem them. No. You ask for more wishes. That I didn't have time to you, be that specific. You ask for a thousand portable wishes. Steve, I, all I wished for was to have a good podcasting session with you. Oh, so much for that. <laughs> I guess the wish didn't work. <laughs> Do you have anything new, Steve? Uh, while you were telling your story, I sent a message that I should have sent a couple days ago on Facebook Marketplace to a guy who is selling a what he says is a Kingston bass. It's a Jap one of these Japanese jazz bass kind of copies. Uh huh. He's selling it for one hundred and forty dollars. All right. So I'm hoping in the next like twelve ish hours I get a response back and I can go buy it tomorrow because that would be super cool. Where is it? It's it, it's on like the other side of Menifee. Oh, okay. All right. So, so it's in your neighborhood. Yeah, it's a little sketchy because it's on Facebook Marketplace and the guy doesn't have a profile picture. Mm. so i'm hoping he'll meet me if if it goes through like he'll like meet me at a gas station or yeah, something yeah. <laughs> cuz uh uh but it looks cool i posted a picture of it in the i put a picture of it in the in the drive oh yeah look, that's beautiful that's, but it's cool it's a sunburst two pickup like two it's that like japanese like humbucker but it's like a staple humbucker totally it's thing. probably a single coil yeah yeah, yeah. it's all fake yeah uh, it's kind of dumb. I don't need it, but like, I don't 125 know. bucks. No, it's 140, 140. I really just had to, I send mean, there's no, uh, Chet Axkins. Yeah. I had to send the message to the guy so I could talk about it for this. What's new. <laughs> you manufactured what's new well, while you were not paying attention to my story. I, I'll, I'll say like, if it comes through then in, uh, two, not weeks? two weeks, cause Three we weeks? were doing a special recordio session mm -hmm. in a couple weeks, but uh, in three weeks, uh, I'll hopefully remember to bring it over here and okay. we'll check we'll it check out in person. Out. Yeah. Uh, but you know, that's that. That's all I got for what's new, Ryan. All right. And you know what's not new? What's not new, Steve? This sponsorship from Chase Bliss and this pedal, the Mood Mark II. But what is new is they have the Hi Fi Condor. That's true. That's a new pedal from that's them. That's a new pedal. And if you want to know about all of their new things, like the minute that they come into fruition, you want to get on that mailing list? You want yeah. to head on over to chasebliss.com and sign up. I hate. Do you want a ticket to ride inside of Joel Corte's mind? Get on the email list. Yeah. I hate subscription lists. I've been actively unsubscribing to them, but this is an email list that's worth being on. Uh, is the Chase Bliss yeah. list. Go get on it. This episode's mm -hmm. also brought to you by String Joy. These are orbiters. These strings, they're coated. They're coated with enamel. Yeah, that stuff on your teeth, but unlike your teeth, which are white, see, eh, mm. mine are kind of yellow. Eh. The enamel coating on this is super thin and it's clear. They look just like normal strings, but I feel like they stay feeling like brand new strings for a really long time. Like They got that slippery clean, just left the dentist exactly. feel. It's slippery clean. It's not like that weird rubbery clean that other coated strings might yeah, have. Yeah. It's it's a natural you know how clean. You know how your your teeth feel after you eat a whole bag of, uh, of jelly beans at the movie theater? And you're like, I can't wait to get home to, to clean my teeth because they uh -huh, feel so grimy. Uh -huh. You know, your strings can feel like that. Yeah, yeah. But these won't because they're coated with enamel. Like your teeth. Go uh, head on over to use the affiliate link below. That way they know that you, you came because of us. <laughs> uh, and use code HUM at checkout to save 10%. That's Stringjoy. Yeah, Stringjoy. Stringjoy.com. Go get some strings. You need them for your guitar. This is a guitar podcast. If you're not a guitar player, why are you watching it? You need strings. So click the link and give them a try. Just give them a try and let us know what you think. Tell us in the comments if you didn't like them. If you don't like string joy strings, tell us in the comments. If you love the string joy strings that you got, tell us in the comments too. Like we want to know. Ryan, hit me with that topic. So, oh, dang it. I just scrolled through my photos. Don't worry, Steve. I'll be able to find it quickly. Here we go. Kyle Jackson <laughs> says or asks, mm -hmm. 
if you could trade your guitar skill for any other skill, what would it be? Like wake up tomorrow with zero ability to play guitar, but a mastery ability, something else. What would it be? I appreciate that it's not like you're trading your guitar skill for an equal skill in something else. Yeah. It's you're trading your guitar skill for a mastery of something else. <laughs> yeah. You say we could, both of us could potentially trade up. I mean, I think unless you pick something dumb, you're trading up. Yeah. Yeah. A mastery level. And also like, I know that I could sell. I know that I could continue making a living with a guitar channel starting from square one. Because I would just get sponsorships from people like True Fire. Be like, well, I've got to <laughs> relearn guitar now. Like, my memory has been wiped and all my physical ability, even my calluses have disappeared. And I'm starting from day one and I'll document this over the next couple of years as I learn guitar. Yeah. You wake up the next day. I've you've still got, got a living. You've got 130,000 guitar fans at your at your fingertips, but you forgot how to play guitar. <laughs> Completely forgot. But. You pick it up and you're like, what's this part I called? Have, it's like, Ryan, those are strings. I have become an expert at something else. What do I want to become an expert at? Like there's things I could become an expert at for my own personal satisfaction and pleasure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like what if I became an expert chef overnight? And now, now I'm like cooking amazing meals for that's, myself. That is something that I thought about. I think that could be good. And I could just change the flavor of the YouTube overnight and be like, oh, this is just a yeah. cooking show now. I think you could continue, you could still cheat code this whole system, right? You could just continue to cheat this system. Mm -hmm. You've lost all of your guitar skill. You've traded it for a mastery of video production. So now you're starting from scratch with playing guitar, but editing your videos just became like a thousand times easier. I'm already all right at that. You're already oh. pretty good, but I'm saying like oh, for so me. you want it for, for you. Me, all I right, could, all if right. I was like a, ma like, because when I say I video, like video production, I'm thinking very broad here. Like I'm still trying to figure out what to do with the lighting in my room. I've got it mostly figured out, but like now I'm the master of video production and that includes like room dressing. See, we're, we're thinking, now I know exactly what We're I thinking want. too small here. I know. Really like... What we should just be trading our ability for is a complete mastery of how to win the lottery. <laughs> is that a skill? Yeah, there's people who figured out how to do it. Like the people who figured out how to do it were brute forcing the lottery. I know, but that's the skill that we would have. That's, that, it's not a skill. That's, I mean, I guess it's a skill. Or like, like say, like just mastery of playing poker or blackjack right, or something right. like that. Like mastery of picking of picking a winning horsey mm -hmm. at the races. Mm -hmm. Like there's things that we could do that, that that we could master that could just finance and fund whatever we want to do for the rest right, of our lives. Right. I are you thinking of like I could say like, oh I could choose to be an expert brain surgeon, but then I gotta do brain surgery right, all day. Right. And that sounds like a drag. Have you um I mean some of this is like rough because it's like you're negating the the journey, I guess, of the learning process. Right. But uh even if you were to like narrow it down to like a very simple skill or not simple, but like one thing is the way I think we're both thinking about this is are you familiar with uh, with how familiar are you familiar with character creation? Or dice rolling in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, like if I, do you I know, know that it's a thing. You know what? Do you know what a natural twenty is? Uh, no. So when I don't know for a lot of skills in Dungeons and Dragons, you roll a twenty sided dice. Right. So like, you roll a twenty sided dice. There's a there's actually this song I heard like a week ago. I think it's called Perception Check. And the idea of like a perception check is uh, if you roll. Um, if you roll like a natural, if you roll a one, it's like a critical fail. And instead of seeing the thing that you want to see, you go, you instantaneously go blind. Uh, but like a natural 20 is like, you perceive everything there is to perceive about a thing. So that's the way I'm thinking about mastery. My mastery would be like jump shot basketball. All of a sudden I'm the greatest basketball player ever. People are like, but Steve, you've only mastered the jump shot. You can't dribble. You can't pass. You can't run. But because I've mastered the jump shot, I can hit a jump shot from anywhere on the basketball court. I can also hit a jump shot. I like, yeah, but I, do you want to play basketball to earn a living? 
Do you want to play basketball? Fair. Do you want to play basketball? I'm just going to. I'm just going like to enter. Every, I'm every just going to enter into trick shot competitions. Every wish has like a monkey's paw element to it. Like there's a negative to it. I know. Like you got to figure out the least negative thing to trade for because a guitar skill, the ability to play guitar, is something that we've worked hard for. Is yeah. something that yeah. we've earned. Is something that we have a a life journey going through, and we're trading it for something that is a cheat code. So we you have to make sure that it pays off like a cheat code, mm-hmm. but doesn't penalize you in a way that you could avoid, you know, like, the, like fair. you have to be smart about it. You know, like, of course, if you went to metal, medical school and worked your whole life to be a brain surgeon, you want to work on brains. You worked your whole life to do it. Yeah. I could make a wish and earn a brain surgeon salary, mm-hmm. but then I have to do brain surgery. And that doesn't sound interesting to me. And there's a lot of jobs that don't sound interesting to me that pay a lot of money, but I don't want to do them. If I wanted to do them, I would have gone through the process in life to do them. This is like bordering on the Dr. Manhattan scenario of like when you become like this, this uh, hyper intelligent, super powered meta human. Right. And now you're like bored with humanity. Right. Right. Just over it. I want to be a master at uh, investing. That would be the work that I would do. And I wouldn't see it as work because as a master of investing, uh, I would be so good at it that I'd only have to do it for like a month. And then yeah, I could, you could do then it. I at, could do other things. You could do it at your leisure. Yeah. That seems yeah. like something that's, that's akin to like the, the, the lot lottery and the gambling stuff is like, yeah. you could do it at, at your leisure and do it for fun and do it when you need the cash. Okay. Like, like you, let, you like let, if you were known to be a master of investing, like other people would come to you and be like, I've, I've got a million dollars. Yeah. Like I'll let, I'll let you take 60% if you can turn it into, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. And you, you wouldn't even need your own money. You could do it for other people right. when you feel like doing All it. Right, let's put some brackets on this because it's kind of getting goofy. Okay. I think let's say this is a, a skill that you master that you don't, that you just want in your life. You don't have to make money with it. You don't, you would not make, this is not a skill that you would make money with. Mm-hmm. Just like if you weren't a, a YouTube demoer. Sure. Like guitar would not be a skill that you're using to make money. Okay. So this is, re- this is the skill that's replacing guitar. The role of guitar in, in an average person's life. Okay. In an average Ryan's life. Right. Someone who's not making their living doing it. Right. So if you could trade a skill that you, you enjoy that mm-hmm. you've built mm-hmm. it because you enjoy it. It doesn't, it doesn't make a living for you, but you could trade it for something else. Like I could see someone being like, "Oh, I, sh- I sh- wish I could cook instead." I already yeah, said that earlier. I maybe like, like woodworking. Like I can't build sure. things. Yeah. If so you handed me a chisel and were like, "Do a sc- if you could do like a scroll things, thing," though, I'd be like, "I don't know how to do that." If you could build things, you could build a guitar. Now you're back <laughs> on you're back on the wagon, baby. <laughs> uh, what are some other like not like they're like? Um, how about you? How about can you have a mastery of parenting? I want that. <laughs> Yeah, how about just like a mastery of like living a good life? I want being a, chill and being cool. I want a mastery of gardening, not because I'm like, oh, I'm going to save all this money by like having my own plants, but like I just want to plant things and not have them die. <laughs> you want to win the blue ribbon at the county fair. Yeah, yeah. You want the biggest pumpkin. Yeah. Steve exactly. wants a pumpkin. He could. I want to take a. I want to take a bouquet of roses to like the rose competition at the Del Mar Fair and be mm-hmm. like, I made these. Yeah. I, I made plan, these, I roses. these. Okay. But here, here's the question. So yeah. Like here, here, yeah. here's a hack to this wish. Okay. So if you could trade your guitar skill for mastery of another skill, both of us could upgrade our guitar skill just overnight. We'd just be like, I'd like to trade my guitar skill for mastery of guitar. <laughs> because <laughs> neither of us have mastered guitar let's be honest well so that's the other thing is like you think about it is like would i would you trade your guitar skill for like a mass like oh i i can't play guitar anymore but like listen i am the, i'm the you know i'm louis armstrong now if i'm the new louis sure, armstrong sure, sure. if master of trumpet yeah yeah if if I could, you know, wheel and deal with this genie or whatever we're dealing with mm-hmm. in this wish scenario, what if I could trade my guitar skill for just base level competence for both of us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, what's base level competence? <laughs> like, competence? You, like, you know, I could play full songs and videos. <laughs> Here, Here's, okay, going back to the sponsor, I, I was looking at a lot of things, and this is related. Uh, I was looking at a lot of things in True Fire, mm-hmm. and one of the things that's interesting about True Fire is... is uh, that Use I, code 60CYCLE30 for 30% that, off. Use our link below. Uh, that I, I didn't think about this during the sponsor spot, and it probably wouldn't work in the sponsor spot, but... Um, they really have lessons for like all levels. Right. To the extent where like, I know we talk about like, Oh yeah, I'm not really like, uh, I've been doing know. the base lessons and I'm, I'm starting at starting at square one. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would say you're probably starting at square two or three. No, I'm forcing myself to start you're with forcing yourself to start with lessons that like I would think are beneath me, but no, I'm picking up skills cause I skipped over all that, you know? So like, so, uh, I was looking at their easy song lessons. Mm-hmm. I can't do them. Like, because they're, they're like, uh, like not, this isn't an ego thing. Sure. Sure. Um, but at least like the ones that I watched, like I was like, this is maybe the stuff that would have been good for me like 30 years ago or what not yeah. for, like 20 years ago. But, but for somebody who's just starting out, who maybe like music one-on-one music instruction is very expensive mm-hmm. uh, not to turn this into a pitch. But, like, I could see the value in, like, you want to learn how. Like, the first thing the guy does in the video is, like, oh, we're going to use the common, like, uh, down, down, up, up, or down, up, down, up, up, down, whatever, strum pattern. I can't describe it. But you know what I mean? The one that, that's, like, every pop song. And I'm, like, okay, I already know how to do this. And then I'm hearing the song. I'm, like, I'm, like, watching the video is actually confusing me more than if you just handed me the tabs. Or yeah. the chord chart. Yeah. But again, like that's because well, of where I'm at. I'm at this awkward sub intermediate stage. So when you, but the, what I'm saying is when you say competency, I'm like, what is, com- what is competency here? Does that move you down and me up? Or it would mean that we're both like gig ready for, oh, okay. um, for like a decent majority of bands. Right. right. You know, we could step into a bunch of bands and learn, learn the songs and play the songs and sound like we know what we're doing on the, oh, our instruments cool. at, mo- at most times. Right. Um, without being like incredible flashy experts sure. or something sure. like that. But here, here's another thought about this. Like choosing to completely forego all of our guitar skill. They, it's just all erased overnight. All our knowledge, all our physical mm-hmm. ability, all our muscle memory, all our calluses, et cetera, et cetera. In favor of a new exciting skill. But retaining the full intention to play guitar, to relearn guitar, could actually be a great thing for people like us who I'm going to venture to say being self-taught and being self-taught when we were teenagers, we learned a lot of stuff wrong. Right. And if we if we were in a position where we could relearn from square one now, mm-hmm. we could learn more correctly how to play, what to do and not do. We have adult money now, so we can afford lessons, whether it be in mm-hmm. person or you know, with a, a website or something like that. And we would have the maturity to actually listen to them and pay attention and follow the instruction right, right. instead of just being like, oh, I don't like this song. I want to play Green Day, you know, <laughs> like, we would actually develop skills the way that you're supposed to. Sure. Instead sure. of spending decades of our lives fumbling through an instrument that we fell in love with and enjoyed deeply, obviously, but kind of just, you know, clumsily stumbled into playing it. All right, cheat code. Okay. I want to trade my guitar skill for a mastery of mandolin. So when I start learning guitar, I can already shred. Right, right. Like you're already a shred master. Now you just have to learn cowboy chords because you already know how to do everything else. Right. Or you could just like cheat, <laughs> cheat code. You'd be like mastery of acoustic guitar. <laughs> mastery uh, of as a different instrument. Mastery diff- of flamenco guitar. Mm, and then you can like just jump over. And be like, well, I still want to play the stuff that I like, but I'm gonna, I have this flamenco guitar skill now mm-hmm. that I can throw in and get spicy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, like that feels a little cheap. Okay, Ryan, a different bracket. You have to give up your guitar skill, but you don't get a mastery of your new skill. You get a skill that is equivalent to your guitar skill in this new thing, but you get it instantly. Wait, what's it, the premise here? 
Okay, you lose your guitar. So so okay, you're yeah. so instead of being able to demo guitar products on YouTube, you can now demo pots and pans. That's your level okay, of cooking right. skill. Okay, is you know how to use all kitchen the aid and attachments and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, is there any, like, what would jump out to you? It's like, oh, yeah, I would do that. Oh, like, I, I have to transform my career to cover cover my well, new expertise? I'm saying, like, that's the level of expertise you would have. <sighs> I mean, is this is the goal to make a living or is the goal to enjoy myself? Whatever. Whatever. Like, would you say your current uh, cooking I skill? Wish, like, just the... I, I, it's, 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 I try to think about this sometimes, and it would be hard to do... I, I wish that I would have the ability to like make an okay living or comparable living mm -hmm. just by going surfing. Oh, just like yeah. that, going to the beach every day, catching some waves, maybe vlogging or something like that. Yeah. And you know, someone's there to film me you're catching waves. Maybe you're, you know, you got a, you got a few, you got some connects with some different yeah. surfboard companies. Instead of going to Toman and to and to Sweetwater, I get to you know go yeah. to Tahiti. Yeah, and, you're, you're you know, taking like, your uh, Ryan Burke in Tahiti, sponsored by Wave Storm. Right, right. Oh, I, <laughs> I love my Wave Storm. I, I don't know. That, I drop I drop a Costco board into a. Tube I don't know somewhere. why that's the brand I thought of. I don't know why that's the only surfboard brand I can think of How right now. It? You were trying to think of any surfboard <laughs> yeah. brand, and you thought of Wave Storm. It's terrible. Wave Storm are is the 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 surfboards that are made out of boogie board foam yeah, that they yeah. sell at Costco. Which are they're really fun, by the way. I don't think they're I, they're the squire bullet of sur of of surfboards. I think I'm just so far removed from that now that I don't know what any surfboard brands are. You know, it is tough because it's like you could say like Billabong and you would be wrong because they don't make surfboards. You could say there's a couple brands like you could say like Hollister and be wrong. You could say uh That's why I didn't say any of those. Right. But it, can you guess any other? I don't want to give too much away. Can you guess any other surf brands? I, I don't feel like I can. That's the problem. Like, not that I'm like this. I know this company, glasses, surfboards. Well, like, I, isn't I there think like a? There are companies that that do still make surfboards, but they probably they they sure. you know OEM them out. Isn't there like a company that's like Clark or something? Clark Clark Foam doesn't exist anymore. Oh, okay. yeah. See, that's yeah. how far out of touch I am. Yeah, yeah. It's so it be, you don't know like your, would it be your like Quicksilver, your Billabong, your Quick, Rusty. Does Quicksilver manufacture surfboards? No. So that's what I'm saying. I know like the clothing, like Rusty. Right, right. There's a lot Billabong. of clothing. There's a lot of clothing brands yeah. that don't make surfboards. Reef. You could right. be a Reef calendar Reef makes, model. Reef makes sandals. Uh Rainbow. Rainbow also makes sandals. <laughs> uh, like there's Rusty. Rusty makes surfboards. Does Rusty make surfboards? Gordon and Smith makes surfboards. Uh, Gordon and Smith is the one I was trying to. Moray Boogie, not surfboards, but you know, you could do a little boogie board trip. Moray Boogie, side. I'm looking forward to the movie because that is a Mattel property. Oh, I was like, is there a movie? No, uh, Tom Moray sold to Mattel in the 80s or something oh. like that. And he sold for like a million dollars where he could have, he could have been a billionaire if he held on to it or something like that. Ryan Birkin to Tahiti by Ron John Surf Shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. There's a surf shop brand that you know the name the of. Mitch's. Like, yeah, in the local surf shop, Mitch. Yeah, Mitch's. Surf Rider. <laughs> the surf a chain the surf report all right all right let's, 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 let's i'm just let's, saying words yeah, yeah. now would you do you think you, hey, you're a sports guy do you think you'd you already mentioned the basketball but do you think you would trade for like baseball skills or anything legit like, that? like if it was a mastery i'd probably like if it was like full ass mastery and it, you know all of a sudden you're a professional i'd be like yeah i would uh trade but you still have your age do you think you would I mean, you're a master I mean, though master is you're master, a master man. at your age even a master at my age, if all of a sudden I woke up tomorrow and I was goddamn Nolan freaking Ryan, who at 40 years old was still throwing like 96 miles an hour and had guys shitting their pants. Hell yeah, dude. Buy guitar. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Texas guitar. Rangers. You, you, would, you would be a professional baseball boy if you could? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Love it. Yeah. Be old man. I'd be like that movie, The Rookie. Did you ever watch that movie? It's like a do Disney movie. Do you think I watched that movie? I don't movie? know, man. It's Dennis Quaid. You watch Dennis Quaid movies? Probably. 
I don't think I ever watched, watched the Dennis rookie. Quaid baseball. I think movies. the last movie I've uh, Matt, last like baseball movie I watched was probably Angels in the Outfield oh, when dude. it came out. It's like one of the worst ones. <laughs> Angels in the Outfield. <laughs> or what was that? The one where his arm got tweaked and no, that's Rookie of the Year. Rookie of the Year. Okay. Angels of the Outfield came out. Angels same, of the like, Outfield came out after that. Period, though, yeah. right? There was a there was a run in the early nineties of like young adult sports movies that are like pretty iconic. Mm -hmm. You've got Mighty Ducks. Yeah. Angels in the Outfield. Sandlot. Rookie of the Year. Sandlot. There I mean, was, I've I watched, I've watched Sandlot ones. because it's just an entertaining movie. Yeah. It's a nostalgia yeah. piece. Yeah. Like, it's a creepy clown away from being a Stephen King yeah. coming yeah. of age. You it's, know? An, like, it's a, Sandlot's a, like a piece of Americana. Like, right, it right. It feels like just, it's American graffiti, but it's baseball. It's just cashing in on that Wonder Years hype. It, it kind of is. Kind of is, right? Kind of is. Yeah, I'd trade, I'd trade guitar for an instantaneous We both would trade for baseball. sports stuff. What does that say? I don't know. It says we... But my we're... sport means I get to chill out on the beach and eat Hawaiian food and, and go to Tahiti. Yeah. Your That's... sport means you get to hang out in dirty baseball fields. I mean, I guess the thing is Hang out is with like... the boys in the locker room. Yeah. I assume my mastery means I'm also no longer injured. Is that fair? And I don't even want to be a professional surfer. I want to be like a free surfer, someone who just right. like surfer like gets to surf locations and look cool doing it. Like yeah. I don't want to do competitions. That sucks. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do I wouldn't want to be like a baseball content creator. There's people who do that. Sure, sure. Um I just want to play some I just life, want to trade but... all my guitar skill for Fortnite and Minecraft <laughs> and just <laughs> video games. Those people make a lot of money. Yeah. If I wanted to trade something for like a money making thing, those people make a lot of trade, money. Trade, trade your guitar skill. All of a sudden you're like, just headshot, headshot, headshot. Right, right. Headshot. Oh, I, I watched this guy on Instagram or TikTok or something. He's like the, this, uh, you know, retired seal or something like mm -hmm. that. And he, he just snipes in video games all day long and he just knows he because he was a sniper he knows how to snipe mm -hmm. and he just does this just does all these headshot comp, headshot compilations but he's like 68 years old and he just gives these great big like old man wheezing laughs whenever he <laughs> takes someone out from like three miles oh away in gosh. a video game and it's like there's a little pixel moving and he lines up on it and, thunk, and he gets them and he just has a big old laugh it's great <laughs> Are all right we, let's, are we done with this hobby yeah yeah i think we're done with it all right we filled enough time right yeah did we give you your money's worth for a guitar podcast this last ad is called no just no oh yeah this thing i don't think i looked at this one. Oh yeah I did. it's just a wonky gumby guitar mm, let's see world's weirdest ugliest guitar electric custom made okay this is probably the weirdest thing i've come across this was custom built for a guy by a luthier here in Austin, Texas. Sadly, before he finished, the guy who he was building for died. This guitar is so bad. The guy who <laughs> ordered it died to he, avoid playing it. He was a local musician here, and he liked weird guitars. I'm leaving it exactly how I found it. I, I don't know what the humbucker is in here. I haven't taken it out. I'm not sure how the wiring is. This thing is just goofy. It's probably the most unique and ugliest guitar I've ever seen. There's got to be someone uh, out there here who wants it the neck feels pretty good it feels like it was really nicely made it's not anything cheap it's in manor texas five hundred dollars let's take a look i have a feeling it's fine like I, I don't believe that this thing is an amazing neck on it but every cut on this is wonky every every part of it is look at where the knobs are like right behind the bridge like that like what is going on there's because there's apparently no good junction points for the uh, strap locks to go or the strap knobs to go. They're just both on the back of the body. Right. No, those could have, one of those knobs could have been, the strap buttons could have been on that top. On the top horn. A horn? It's not a horn. It's a growth. And then there's a back horn? Mm -hmm. You know, like, like it's, what this guy should have done, the guy who ordered this, is first of all, he should have, you know, like not ordered a guitar right before he died. How inconsiderate. Um, I'm I'm being a joker, by the way. I'm not trying to belittle this guy's passing. I hope that he passed at the exact age that he hoped for. And I hope it wasn't tragic or sad or anything like that. Um, 
he should have just bought a pure Salem creep. Mm -hmm. Like this has the vibes of that without the execution. He should have just bought a pure Salem creep. That's, that's all I have to say. Cause the rest of this is just bad. Like I, I see that he was trying to go weird in a certain direction and it, it's, it, he did not succeed. This, so that's one of the issues I have here. I'm looking at this. This looks like it's in maybe somebody's, the pictures are in like somebody's garage studio, maybe. This is in a of, house. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it's a garage. Oh, yeah. There's a, there's like, well, even, is that carpet or cement? I think that's cement. Yeah, you might, you might but be right. There's this also might, a, could be a basement. There's a junction panel. Um, I think it's a basement. What's that called? Like a, 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 a breaker a, box, a breaker box. Yeah. Yeah. So this is probably in a basement. So my first problem with this is, and I don't know, like it, it looks like a set neck, I guess from the back, but this looks like a first act neck. Yeah. And I guess their, their, uh, planet waves, Diderio locking tuners, but they, they look weird. Also, if this is custom, why are there, yeah, why are there holes re-drilled for tuners? Like, if you were yeah. a custom guitar, you would specify what tuners you wanted and keep them. I feel like this is more along the lines of somebody had maybe a bunch of parts or they said, here's a guitar, shape it into something else. I don't know. This is... And look how sloppy, like, the neck joint looks on the front. Like, I don't I don't believe this is an expert build. I, I, if, if, yeah. if anything, I think this guy had as a bandsaw and a garage and he cut out this body shape and then he took it to someone is like, can you put a neck on this please? Mm. Can you turn this? Mm -hmm. I made this guitar body. Can you turn it into a guitar for me? And, oh. and the person that he took it to bless their heart. They, they did the very best they could with what they were given. It's got a wrap around uh intonatable tailpiece. That's, that's like a fine enough touch. It's probably okay. just volume tone wiring. So Maybe there's a push pull in there. We can wrap Who this cares? up. We can wrap this up right now. Not $500, 500 bucks plus $50 shipping. When we just at the beginning of this episode, saw the Chet ax skins for six twenty. Yeah. Are yeah. you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This is probably more playable as a traditional guitar, but as something that, anyone would want to own no this this is a 75 dollar object at best okay ryan here's the skill that i'm trading guitar mass guitar for i'm trading for this skill it's the skill of persuasion specifically mm. to persuade people to not do this yeah don't do this don't do this you actually have, that would be a inc pretty incredible yeah. skill that would probably only end up being well, actually, for most people, it would be end, end up being used for evil, but because I'm such a kind and pure soul, a simple, it would never be used for evil. A simple skill like that, that's actually really smart. The skill, the mastery of persuasion, yeah. mastery of charm, mastery of, of, of you know, social situations. Like, yeah, yeah. So there's, there's a deeper level there that, like a, a, a life skill that would be far more useful in the long run versus just like, I can throw a ball fast and I'm and, good. I'm good enough at a surfboard. And I'm thinking like true mastery, like, right. I don't really like what he has to say some of the time. Like I, it would be so, dangerous if you were a psychopath. So, com so comparing two people, like I think Andrew Tate thinks he has mastered the skill of persuasion, but I don't, think he has <laughs> well i think I, I think he has but for he he's mastered the skill of charming a very the, specific right. demographic I, I of think, very sad i think men. a much more like broad example that is also kind of in that same space would be like jordan peterson who's also very persuasive also sometimes kind of lately uses that power of persuasion in ways that i think are kind of messed up but more broadly, like he at least used to not use them for ways sure, that sure. are as messed up. But I'm thinking like very broad, like I would use it to persuade myself to get really good at guitar. Right, right. You would look in the mirror and persuade yourself Steve, to do something useful with your life. Today, you're going to spend half an hour in focused guitar practice. Mm, 
Intentional guitar practice. Intentional yeah. guitar practice. Ryan, we got to do... We got to do Adventures uh, Club. We got to do Adventures Club. Are we going to need the wheel? You tell me what your pick is. It's it's Chet Axkins, man. We don't need to spin no we don't freaking need to spin wheel. No freaking wheel. Chet Axkins <laughs> for the win. Is that the Santander? It's Santander. It's 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 got to be Dave. Uh, Dave's been taking uh, the. Um, Dave is winning so consistently that he's going to have to file taxes. He's been taking Florida board pedals for his last couple wins, so mm. I may. That's because he wants to avoid the tax situation I may that I just him up hinted at. Before this episode drops, to be like, hey, man, I'm about to ship out your last pedals. I'm going to give you a little secret. You already won the next one. Do you want me to just send you four <laughs> pedals? So I only have to pay shipping once. There you go. I, I think I'm, I think if I get myself in the right headspace, I'm going to do that. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. Well, it depends it. on whether or not or I Or you could just put it off until Monday. That's, well, that's you, the flip No side one would be surprised if you just. Put it off. Yeah, I may so, do that too. Ryan, yes, do please. you have mastery of the power of persuading me? Because I think you just persuaded me. Mastery of the power of persuasion, because I think you just persuaded me to put this off until next week. I have the I have the mastery of uh of uh what's it called procrastination. Procrastination. I have mastered procrastination, and I'm willing to share my skills and knowledge and abilities in the craft with everyone around me. Ryan, the song is sent by Jacob. Uh, he says song for the show. This song is bomb shelter by pilot to co-pilot featuring zip mouth. Jacob, me, me, that's him saying me mm-hmm. wrote this song about falling out of love. We're going to play the song now. <laughs>
was some very digital sounding emo. It just sounded like 2004 pop punk to me. All it right. sounded like Rufio. But it, like the, the quality of it. Mm, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, it was like the, some, some of the, like some of it like like am I hearing a ring modulator? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, but, but yeah, like what what tell tell I, don't tell them what you think, Steve, I because think, you're 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 someone who appreciates this this genre of music. I think the two vocal thing that's what made me think of of Rufio, kind of had that uh that and the driving, uh reminded me and kind of the up also the kind of like, the all this was like four songs in one. Yeah. There's a, uh, there's which, a bunch which I appreciated sure. uh, that I, I think what you're hearing um, might just be some kind of like compression artifact. Like, I feel like it, it could have been like tightened up. It kind of reminded me though, like probably it maybe, sounded like it was it's like seventh time being burned to a CD. Right. Right. And maybe that's intentional. I maybe, don't know. Maybe I think like, I think there's promise there. I think, maybe Oh yeah. The, I think maybe the, it needs to be polished a little, but I like the song. Yeah, I have. I just want to hear like I want to hear like the EQ spread out a little bit. Sure, sure, sure. It felt very compressed. Well, I, I think there's a, either, there's either a lot of processing going on there, or had that file's been then passed around a lot of times yeah. through various different encoders. And well, I like, like the that. song. No, I th- I yeah. think the sound sa- the song sounds uh ex- a- extremely well done. Yeah. Like that's you know they did the thing. Yeah, they did the thing, and they did it, and it sounds like they're I mean, good I, at doing it. I can't do the thing. You can't do the thing. Yep. And I don't want to do the thing. That's not my style. But I can appreciate the skill that goes into it. And good job. Bye, everybody. Stay grounded.